Hi, everybody, and good Friday evening to you. It is 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. Weather for weather geeks, we're getting set for the weekend. And boy, it still remains, you know, it's kind of a challenging forecast for the weekend. I was uh, talking with uh, Andrew DePaulo earlier on today and talking about how we're glad this isn't like a, a snowstorm kind of a situation because with the way our forecast has had to fluctuate over the last few days, there'd be a lot of gnashing of teeth about snow totals changing and that sort of thing. But thankfully, it is rain and not snow that we are expecting, but not as much rain as we thought earlier, and the timing is a little bit different. So we'll get into all that. But how about that overachieving temperature today? You know, every time it wants to be a, every time it's a sunny day, it just wants to overachieve temperature-wise in our area in recent times. And so our forecast high today was 54, and not good to have a six-degree bust on day one. Beautiful day, we'll take that. But we're not happy as far as the accuracy of the forecast today. Uh, 60 was not a record, by the way. The record today is 65. This was the second warmest. Uh, high temperature on today's date on record. Uh, so not a record, but definitely way above average by a good 20 degrees. All right, taking a look at the country, or uh, more specifically our part of the country this evening, uh, clouds are thickening up. After that bright afternoon, the clouds rolled in pretty, qu pretty quickly early on this evening. Now, this approaching system does have a wintry component to it. Winter weather advisories out for parts of uh, the high plains. But, you know, without a connection to the Arctic, there's no true Arctic air associated with this system. It's not going to be a huge deal as far as wintry precipitation in most spots, with uh, just a couple of exceptions, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. In the meantime, our rainfall expectations, yeah, they've come down. Here's a look at our current computer model spread as of 7.50 p.m. Now the top end of the range advertised by the models is around an inch. Some of the less aggressive models now are closer to half an inch, and so you know, if you've been watching this video this week, a couple of days ago, some of the modeling was showing up to two inches worth of rain. Expectations have definitely lowered as the system has gotten a little bit faster and a little more moisture starved as well. So let's take a look at how this might play out. So this is one computer model animation here, and so it's not going to be exactly right, but we'll show you what the possibilities will be. I think as we go into the daylight hours on Saturday with the approaching warm front, um, there could be a passing shower before Saturday morning is through, but then I think the sun's going to try to come out for a little bit of time, at least during the midday hours, before showers might return towards sunset. Now, a couple of days ago, this looked like it'd be a pretty big mass of rain coming east. Now, it's, you can see it's a little more scattered. There's probably going to be some thunder and lightning in the mix, especially from the Ohio River on south. I can't rule out a rumble of thunder around here tomorrow night. I think it's a little more likely in southern Ohio and points to the south. Now, as we go into Saturday night and Sunday morning, again, notice how... There's just not as much rain advertised as earlier, especially on the back edge. So it's going to be possible that by daybreak on Sunday, um, in a lot of our area, especially in areas north and west of Youngstown, we're probably going to be drying out for the rest of the day at that point. Best chance for some lingering rain on Sunday during the daylight hours is probably south and east of Youngstown, closer to Pittsburgh, and heading over towards Dubois and, and Altoona and Johnstown, places like that. But uh, I think things are definitely trending drier in a chunk of our viewing area during the daylight hours on Sunday. Now, as this system heads towards the East Coast by Sunday evening, uh, the shield of precipitation will be well out to our east at that point. It's going to be a rainy, miserable, windy afternoon and evening along the eastern seaboard on Sunday. There will be a swath of snow primarily along the spine of the Appalachians that will give some accumulations to some of the higher terrain in West Virginia, Panhandle of Maryland, Central PA, up into parts of upstate New York as well. But I don't think we're going to see much at all in the way of snow around here, aside from a scattering of flurries and snow showers Sunday night into Monday morning. Might that coat the ground in some spots? Yes. Is it going to be a big deal in the grand scheme of things? No, it does not appear to be that. That, that will be the case, I should say. So again, a handful of inches possible uh, along the spine of the Appalachians, heading up towards uh, Albany, New York, Tug Hill Plateau, the green and white mountains in the interior parts of New England. That's where the snow will be an issue. Now, once we get uh, past a blustering cold day Monday, all systems go for a pretty nice stretch of weather next week by mid-December standards. A couple of sunny days, a few sunny days at least heading our way. Tuesday, Wednesday, probably Thursday and Friday as well. And this is the 8 to 14 day outlook. You know, you don't see any blue on the map from coast to coast. 16th through the 22nd of December. Uh, maybe close to average in the deep south, but otherwise, coast to coast, we are flooded with Pacific air and not Arctic air in the run-up to Christmas. I don't think we're going to see any sort of uh, anything remotely like we saw around Christmas time last year. Am I going to close the door on the 8th of December? Am I going to close the door on a white Christmas? No, I'm not going to do that this early. But the pattern is becoming more and more unfavorable 
as we get closer to the holidays um, for cold and snow. That's the way it looks right now. And part of the reason for that is what's going on in Asia and the Pacific. To kind of orient uh, yourself here, here's Australia. Over here is Asia. This is the Pacific Ocean. Over here is the United States. See all these uh, bright colors here? We're looking at the jet stream here on the European model uh, 10 days from now, on the 18th day of December. What we're going to see is a screaming jet stream coming off of the Asian continent and heading out over the Pacific Ocean. When you see something like this, usually downstream, that means really active weather for the west coast of the U.S. It also means the continent gets flooded with Pacific air with no connection to the Arctic. We saw this a couple of winters ago in what was supposed to be a coldish winter, 2021, 2022, ended up being another mild winter. Part of the reason was that was for that was we saw a lot of time during that winter with this extended Pacific jet that just flooded North America with Pacific air. Now this is not something that's real predictable on a seasonal time scale. Caught a lot of us by surprise in that winter of 21-22. It's something that uh, is going to prevent, I think, uh, a lot of cold air to get into the pattern before the end of the year. <clears throat> now, do we think things will change in the new year? Yes. But through at least the end of the year, not seeing any sort of a large-scale pattern change at this point. There was some, there was some, you know, a lot of uh, promise earlier on for maybe around the holidays, some sort of big pattern change. I still think it can be chillier, and maybe even cold enough to snow in some spots between Christmas and New Year's. But a big pattern change, a remarkable change, no, it doesn't seem like it's in the cards. And you know, it's been a month since we issued the original winter forecast. That was during the first week of November, and I told you we would do an update on the winter forecast about a month later. So here we are on the 8th of December. Let's talk a little bit about that winter forecast. And I don't see much to change as far as the forecast goes. This is a look at the status of ENSO, the El Nino Southern Oscillation. Um, we're in an El Nino phase as opposed to La Nina. The El Nino is strong. It's not gonna be as strong as 2015, 2016, but it is strong, but it's being neutered a little bit by some patches of cold water across the eastern part of the Pacific Ocean. Um, and so it's probably not going to truly behave much like a strong El Nino all winter. If you remember back in this really strong one in 2015, 2016, that was a blowtorch winter. It got cold for a little bit of time in January, but for the most part, we ran the table with warmth that winter. When you get a really strong El Nino, that really tilts the odds in favor of a warm outcome for uh, much of the U.S., including our part of the country. This year's El Nino not as strong, and it is even acting, I think, a little bit weaker than it actually is. So I don't think the ultimate outcome of the winter season will be what we like to call a blowtorch. We're not going to run the table with warmth all winter. And I didn't change a single number on this graphic as far as our odds of certain outcomes for the winter. We still think the most likely outcome temperature-wise is right around average or a couple of degrees warmer than the average. Those are the most likely outcomes. There's still a one in four chance we end up with a colder than average winter. But in order for that outcome to come to fruition, we're going to need some pretty long stretches of cold in January and February because December is almost certainly going to go into the record books as a fair amount warmer than the average, and that's one-third of winter. So again, most likely outcomes here, but we're not going to close the book certainly on some pretty harsh weather later in the season. Uh, changing the ultimate numbers for the entire season. Now, as we go uh, towards snowfall, we didn't change anything here either. We think the most likely outcome is that our area ends up somewhat below average in terms of snow. Not nearly as far below average as last winter. We only had 22 inches of snow at the airport last winter. We normally have 67, and that 22 is at the airport. If you live Mahoning, especially down to Columbia County, you saw barely 10 inches of snow in some spots last winter. Uh, we don't think we're going to see a repeat of that this winter. Uh, the odds most strongly favor it still being a little below average, but a little bit. Just behind that is a near average season. And again, there's about a one in four chance we still end up above average in terms of snow. The odds don't favor that, but we can't rule it out, certainly. And, you know, one in four is not a negligible, you know, chance. So bottom line for you this evening on the winter forecast uh, it's not one of those years where we think we made a lot of mistakes when it comes to the initial forecast. Everything seems to be going pretty much according to plan. So we're going to leave the forecast as is. Bottom line for the winter, warm start, potential for quite a bit more cold and snow later in the winter, and a lot more than we had last January and February. I think if you bought a snowblower over the last couple of years and you've been kind of bummed that you haven't gotten to use it, you're going to get a chance to use it, I think, this winter. Just probably not uh, too much until 
we flip the calendar to 2024. Thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks uh, extended edition on this Friday evening. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. I'll see you back here on Monday.